is Chris Larry, who is a comedian from the South who moved up north and he feels like he's living in the future. Let's give a round of applause for Chris. Y'all, y'all doing all right? Yo, <laughs> People's Comedy Fest, man. Stanford, New York. <laughs> this place is beautiful. <laughs> the hills, the architecture. Give it up for yourselves for living <laughs> <time. laughs> so Y'all don't care about lights, though, huh? <laughs> y'all give a damn about lights up here. <laughs> See how dark I am? <laughs> I go outside past 8 30 here, I become outside. <laughs> I become the beginning and the end. I can't become everything right now. I can't be all at home. I can't become the deity of darkness. I feel like as a society, like all of us, we move on too quickly from news. Like even things that can be jarring, like we hear it one day and the next day we're done with it. So I just want to rewind a little bit and let's just sit in a place like. I wasn't here, but did y'all get the smoke from the Canadian wildfires? Yeah. Y'all got it up here? Okay, cool. It looked like humanity was about to pay for their sins, correct? <laughs> yeah. Just making sure. Just making sure. <laughs> that was insane. And I think I came to a really big, huge realization when that happened. And that's that we like Canada. <laughs> like, that's what Canada, our friends in the north, we love them. Because let me tell y'all something. If Mexico would have did that, <laughs> if Mexico would have pulled that shit, I get, ooh, I get frustrated just thinking about it. We'll set that whole goddamn country in place. <laughs> we will smack you just for eating that Taco Bell. It would have been insane. <laughs> I can see the UN meeting now. All the delegates asking us, have y'all, have y'all seen Mexico? Not the president, like the, the entire country. Like we've been, we've been, we've been texting them no response. It's been no bueno. No bueno at all. Actually, I don't blame Canada for the wildfires, honestly. I blame Biden. I blame, honestly, I blame, I blame Biden for everything. Like that's just the American way. Blame your leaders for all your problems. I stuck my foot up here right now. I'm like, damn, not top. <laughs> it's just the way we are. And I hate how if you're right leaning or you're left leaning, like you gotta, you have to like toe your party's line. Like you gotta be Republican, Democrat. That's ridiculous. Like these people don't have our interests in mind. They don't. Not not in totality. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like she knows what I'm saying. <laughs> like y'all think Joe Biden is the face of trans rights? <laughs> Joe Beasy. Come on now. If Joe Biden was having a conversation with a trans person on camera, he'd say, hey, Jack, when he should have said, hey, Jill. He's just not that guy. He's just not that guy for us. Honestly, you tell me you don't like Biden, I get that. I get it. You can tell me you don't like Trump. Hey, I get that too. You can tell me you don't like Obama, but you're a racist. You're just not that. You're a freaking racist. Down to your bone. We blew up a hospital? Who did? A hospital? I can't blow up a hospital. I blew up a hospital. I'm not fit to leave. It's 2023. Grow up. <laughs> Grow up. People need to understand that half a president's job is to blow things up. The other half is, it is. The other half is a lot of about aliens, but the other half is to blow things up. <laughs> Look what Biden did to the Chinese air balloons in our atmosphere. What did he do? Blow them up, right? <laughs> what did Trump do to Soleimani in Baghdad? He blew them up, right? <laughs> what did Bush do to the Twin Towers? Nobody's talking about that. <laughs> Nobody's trying to cancel him. <laughs> it's crazy. I think we live in a crazy time. And I'm, I'm gonna do a quick poll of the audience real quick. Just by a show of hands, who here goes to church 
every Sunday. Now, I'm not talking about going to church just on Christmas and Easter when you're only reminded of the Lord's presence through a decoration alone. No, I'm talking like every Sunday. Show of hands. Let me see. I'm the only one? <laughs> you people are in trouble. <laughs> A godless country. A bunch of heathens. No, honestly, I don't I don't I don't go to church anymore. I used to go to church a lot. And I, I believe in God. And that's like an awkward thing to say. That's almost embarrassing. That's like saying you put your tooth under your pillow at age 30. Like it's just I'm sure somebody in the crowd's like, no, you dickhead Jesus, really? It's crazy. But back when I was younger, I used to go to church a lot. But church had like a different confidence to it. Like it had spirit, it had faith. We don't have that anymore. Like I went to church recently for the first time in years. And it was different. It was so different. There was no confidence. There was no faith. The pastor didn't even believe what he was saying. <laughs> Here's the pastor. He's doing a sermon. In front of his congregation behind him. And he's reading from the Bible. He goes... And on Friday, Jesus died on the cross and <laughs> Sunday he arose from the dead. I'm just reading what it, what it says. But we, can, we, can, we can go on to the next verse, I'm sure. Here's one. It says here that for 40 days and 40 nights it rained and the entire planet flooded Except the guy told to get a boat. Am I missing a page? <laughs> Nobody else had a boat back then? That was the first time there was a boat? <laughs> yeah. Wait, we can just, just, just continue. We can just move on to the next. One more verse. We'll just see what we do. Here's one. It says, And then before him, an angel with the head of seven dragons the size of the sun. Let me get your Bible. Give me your Bible. I, I, think, I, think, they gave me the, I think I got the wrong one. It's no way. Wait, you want to say the same thing? Are the Muslims thinking this too? I think I might be Muslim. I'm under the car. It's no confidence anymore. Like I said, we live in a different time right now. Completely different time. And I was raised in the church, personally. So, I... And, and it was crazy. I, raised, I was raised in church and it's so different and I'm not even that old. Like, I'm, I'm a 90s kid. Like, I'm born in the 90s through and through. I mean, I was I grew up poor, so I really came up in the 70s. Like, I was watching, I was watching Brady Bunch and Sam and I think Nick was president. It was insane, but it was different. It was different. I came up with, like, a lot of bad ideas growing up. Things I'm not proud of today. Things that are not culture today I had. And I'm going to share them with y'all. And I don't want y'all to judge me, I don't think this way anymore, but here's one right here. <laughs> Growing up, I wasn't comfortable around gay people. I know that's just, it's just like a shock goes through the room. I wasn't. I just wasn't comfortable, I didn't, I didn't feel, I, I, just, I just felt like they were doing something wrong. But you have to understand, I'm from the South, so I just found out the Civil War didn't end in a tie. So I <laughs> Condition to feel and think a certain way. And plus, growing up, there was no gay people around me. Like, none at all. I mean, guys were, guys were sucking each other's things, but we had a crack epidemic. Nobody was. <laughs> I mean, it was gay, you know what I mean? But now that I've come up here up north, I've got some amazing friends. They have amazing ideas. I've got some gay friends, man. I'm, I'm comfortable with gay people now. Like, I'm finally comfortable. Like, I'm being real comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> like, now I'm starting to get worried, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, how long before this rabbit hole turns into a glory hole? I do not know. <laughs> But I'm along for the ride. Just give me the flag. I can just give me the flag. I'm ready to, I'm ready to, I'm ready to be in 2023. <laughs> but don't y'all like living up here up north? Woo! Oh man, it's amazing up here. I love living up here now. Plus everything's legal. Like everything's legal. 
Like, the cops are just here for directions. It's out. <laughs> it's amazing. I remember, I remember when they first legalized weed. Man, I was happy. I'm like, I'm gonna smoke so much weed. Nobody gonna bother me. But then I stopped smoking so much, because then I realized, oh, I kind of like breaking the law. <laughs> that was kind of part of the thing. And then I got excited about 420. I was like, ooh, this might be the best 420 of all time. I'm not gonna smoke weed by myself. If y'all know what 420 is, it's like this underground holiday where stoners get together, they smoke weed. It's kind of like a, you know, a finger to the system. But now it's commercial now. Like now there's ads, billboards. I had to get my grandma a card at Walgreens. Like it's just not. <laughs> It's simply not what it used to be. <laughs> Y'all still having a good time, right? Yeah. right? I'm about to get out of here soon. No. <laughs> but I just want to give thanks to one person who I feel like I wouldn't be here without, and that's my mom, man. Like, my mom is You know, my mom is amazing, man. I didn't really have my dad growing up. So my mom always made sure that in my house, there was a figure of a black male role model that I could always look up to, right? But she wasn't extreme with it, honestly. <laughs> like in my house, Jesus was black. I mean, you know, we got a conversation happening. <laughs> that was the craziest one. In my house, Santa was black. One time, my mom went to the flea market and got a Monopoly board, and the Monopoly man was black. <laughs> Don't you know those 13 go to jail spaces on that board? <laughs> you started the game today. It truly was not fair. That's my time, guys. Yeah.